guys, Monique Creative Wife Life. I am sitting outside of Plato's Closet. I am trying to resell a few things. So it's a 20 minute wait. So I thought, well, why not do a quick homeschool video? So I wanted to talk about, um, so these are the things that I wish somebody told me when I first started homeschool. Um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about why I got frustrated with YouTube, with talking about your homeschooling business on YouTube and all that stuff, and why I almost um, quit YouTubing as a result. Um, so, hey, I am new at this. I am a newbie. I've only been doing this for, uh, this is going into my third year. And um, so I started homeschooling rally right from kindergarten. And like many of you that are just starting, right? Um, you're researching everything in the world. Like you are online, you're asking people, you have, you may have friends or family that have homeschooled and um, you're researching co-ops and everything, right? So you have a lot of information coming at you. Um, when I first started with kindergarten homeschool, was that I tried to implement, first I tried to implement a lot of things and I tried to over schedule and, and if you saw my first schedule, I mean, it literally was like, okay, from eight to eight 30, we're going to do prayer and morning basket and journaling from eight 30 to eight 45. We're going to eat breakfast from eight 45 to nine 15. We're going to do math. It was scheduled exactly like that. And that's great. And it's good for some people. And I thought that it would work for me, but it didn't. And I discovered that after the first three days of homeschooling that that joint didn't work for me. So the one thing I would say is don't be afraid to change things up. Try it. Try it out to see if it works for you. But if it doesn't, that's okay you know your children you know your kid you know what works best for you and your schedule change things up do not be worried about doing it next thing is um um creating this beautiful homeschool room now i think homeschool rooms are amazing i have nothing bad to say about homeschool rooms in fact i secretly want one i really want this beautiful space that's colorful and educational and interactive and, and I, oh my goodness, I, I, and organized. <gasps> so I tried that for kindergarten. We turned my, our living room into a homeschool space. The walls were filled with maps and, and, uh, math posters and English posters. And I had, I had a desk in there for me and a desk in there for Riley. And I had, um, all this stuff on the wall. I mean, I had everything in there um, and it was gorgeous. I loved, I loved going in there every day. It was exciting, except when I wanted my room back. I wanted to have my living room back. So I think it was like the middle of kindergarten maybe. I started like taking things off the wall slowly but surely. And then by the end of kindergarten, everything was off the wall. I moved things around and it was back to kinder it was back to living room. And now it's fully a living room and we homeschool at the table. And I love it that way. So <laughs> you see things on Pinterest and YouTube of these beautiful homeschool rooms. You're like, I want that. I need that in order to homeschool my kid properly, but you really don't. Now, if you want to do it, please do. I will live vicariously through you. But for me, it just didn't work. Again, it's about changing things up and feeling comfortable and okay with doing it. And I homeschool at my kitchen table. Now. Switching curriculums or switching how the way you teach your kid in the middle of the year. So um, my other videos you see, I was very structured and very planned. And I slowly but surely turned into this relaxed homeschooling mom. And I love it. It works for me. I honestly am going into the school year very relaxed, very chill. I know what I need. I know when to order it. I know what to order and how much it costs, and that's that. Um, worksheets and workbooks work well for us. It's good for us on the go. It's just great for us, and um, that's what works. Um, but that's not how I started off. I had a ton of things, different um 
from Pinterest and Teachers Pay Teachers and I ordered things off of Amazon and then I had things on the internet that she was learning from. I mean, I she was learning Spanish. I brought a Spanish teacher in once a week for her to, I mean, which is all good, which is all good. I mean, honestly, it was great. But then after a while, I was like, let's get to basics. I just want you to really know how to read really well and comprehend and spell and do math really and I want well. you to, to be creative and I want you to draw and I want you to write and I want you to um, listen to music and identify different instruments, stuff like that. Whatever became important for us is what we focused on and curriculum and particular types of curriculum went out the window and I focused on the foundations. So changing up your curriculum in the middle of the year is okay. Working on something for a month and discovering that it doesn't work is okay too. And then picking up something different in the middle of the year is great. We started with DK workbooks, DK workbooks, and I didn't like it. I bought a science, math, language arts, and something else. And I think it was in kindergarten or first grade. And I didn't like them. I didn't like them. On a whim, I tried Spectrum and I, it was love at first sight. I really like Spectrum. So again, it's just another change. And I okay. was vlogging every single day for a while, vlogging about different things, fashion, um, meal planning, I don't even know, Christianity, homeschool. But of course, I started focusing a lot on homeschool because that brought a lot of traffic to my channel and a lot of subscribers like you viewed and like 500 videos on homeschooling. I don't know. And then I have a lot of um, wonderful friends that have homeschooled. So, and I've met through YouTube, right? Um, let me just be frank with you. I have watched so many videos on homeschooling and all this stuff. And some of it I don't necessarily agree, or maybe I don't even like their vlogging style. I have never once given a thumbs down or left a negative comment or critiqued in a way that was negative. Never. 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 Even if I disagreed, even if I didn't like it, even if I thought they could be doing something differently or it goes against my whatever i have never left a negative comment what i found is that um being a newbie and learning and doing trial and error you know going through trial and error you as a youtuber you put your life out there and i've got several comments and even personal emails critiquing me in a way that really wasn't positive so much so that I've had to block that person or just not respond to that individual because I'm not gonna stand for that negativity I've gotten thumbs down on things over and over and over again and I'll probably get a thumbs down on this video. I probably will. Um, because people are just people and that's what they do. Um, it had me in such a way that I did not want to talk about homeschooling again on this channel. And then I thought maybe I should just quit the channel. I should just stop and just do my own thing. So I say all that to say that... If you are a vlogger or even if you're not vlogging and you're just in your own world, you're going to have people who are who may critique you or criticize you or put you down or maybe scratch their head and you're confused as to why you're homeschooling or how you're homeschooling or why you're doing what you're doing. Like, you know, or they have ideas that they think that are better for your children or they... Um, may criticize how long you're homeschooling or um, maybe it's too short or maybe it's too long or maybe your kids aren't reading fast enough or um, maybe you're spending too long playing outside in the park or maybe you're not taking them to the library enough or maybe um, 
there are just so many things, right? There's just, I can go on and on and on and on. I mean, you can add to the list of the maybes of what you're not doing or doing. And there's a world of critique. For me, exposing my life to you guys, what I found is that I didn't experience a world of critique in my own life. Not a whole lot, I should say. I've gotten one or two comments in my own life. People generally are praying for me, happy for me, give me a pat on the backs. They're asking how I'm doing. They love Riley. They love that we're homeschooling. And like I said, it's not perfect. I've gotten one or two comments um, as to why isn't she in school? Shouldn't she be in school? Aren't you worried about her socialization? But online, I've gotten a ton of comments. So there's always that chance. So I would say to you is be prepared for that possibly, but also no, it's okay. People have opinions that's okay. They have opinions and they have a right to an opinion. Um, just stay firm in what you believe and what you're doing and know that you're doing right by your child is what's important. So I hope this video wasn't too long. I'm still waiting for Plato's Closet. It's been like 15 minutes. I said 20. They usually text you to let you know that your items have been processed. Okay, guys, I am going. I have gotten a few new subscribers. Hello! Thank you for joining me. Um, if you have any questions or comments, let me know below. And also, I've never said this before, but hit that subscribe button if this is your first time. If this is your first time and you lasted all the way to the end of the video, now hit that subscribe button. Hit it. Hit the subscribe button. And number two, if you lasted at the end of the video, I just want to see who lasts. What color shirt am I wearing? Put that below. Just put mustard yellow or what is this? Yellow below. And I know that you've listened all the way to the end of the video. Okay, guys. Bye.